Hello, everybody. The episode you guys have all been waiting for. I'm here with my bestie, who I haven't seen since, you know, the apocalypse started because he is on the other side of the impenetrable wall that divides Canada and America. He's right outside of Toronto. I love you so much, Chris. Usually I introduce people with their channel, but you don't have a channel yet, although I'm trying to get you to create a channel because Chris, you guys, you guys have all asked me to make like yoga videos and exercise videos. And I always say that's not really my thing to do, but this guy needs to be like making some exercise videos because he has helped me so much He's the one that introduced me to bar. He saved my freaking sacrum. Remember that issue with my sacrum? Mm -hmm. You were there with me. I was there. I was in front of you. <laughs> yeah. You were there when I got my sacrum injured and you were the one that told me to do bar classes to help me strengthen it. And it's like really changed my life. So this guy is like the Mac daddy when it comes to um, strength and mobility. And he understands the body. He's also really good at Reiki. He does long distance Reiki on me from time to time. I get a little message in my head and I'm like, yes, okay. So um, y'all help me in encouraging him to open up his own channel because he would be awesome at putting out material like that. So, so y'all, this is my bestie, Chris, and y'all mm -hmm. sent so he, I literally, and I know Chris, you don't have a channel. So usually I have people go in and talk about their channel, but um, tell my audience a little bit about yourself. A little about me. So we met each other and, you know, six years ago, we were just saying, you know, in India. So I practice yoga. Bryce and I, we met each other when we traveled all the way to India, to, traveled all that way to India to study. Did all you know, that money, traveled all that way. Yeah. And no one never, no one ever looked at us. So <laughs> I still teach yoga. I still teach yoga full time. And now I'm in school for osteopathy to become an osteopath or an osteopathic pra manual practitioner. So that's been great. So during the last two years since everything, the apocalypse, just mm -hmm. been taking the time to study, taking the time to still do what I need to do. <laughs> yeah. And um, you, you also go and don't you train with the Cirque du Soleil people or take classes with them or? Yeah, some of my, I work with a handstand coach and he is a Cirque du Soleil performer. So it's been really fun just to mix things up, you know, get to know other people and just work on different things that, you know, the yoga practice or the things I do, they don't necessarily include. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That, and that's why that link make, makes Chris, like, I'm telling you guys, like he's worked on my body before. Actually, I was thinking about this, Chris. I think I've been naked more times in front of you than oh any God. other man. <laughs> 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 so, so, uh, um, so, and we have, and somebody actually asked that. So people submitted questions, you know, for us and they said, how did we first meet? And so Chris actually just answered that. Um, and then that kind of includes another question. Someone said, what are our, what are our travel stories? Well, no. yeah, we met in India. So I remember you lived right beside my right next, door. right next door, which literally was basically like the same place because the walls are paper thin. And so literally you just went through one door into the other door. So we basically lived together and it was pretty much like kind of love at first sight, wasn't it? Like we it just was so much fun. It doesn't even feel like it's been six years. It really is like from the very beginning. I remember when I really knew I liked you, we were walking home from the Shala. So we were going up Shala road. We were sw hot, sweaty messes. And you were like, Bryce, you have a really nice ass. And I was like, <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I know. I was like, what stories is there? What stories are there? Yeah. It was um, so funny. I, I, you know, um, so somebody asked me and I have to tell the story because what one of your, uh, Somebody asked, what is the most fantastic thing about each other that changed your perspective of the world? What a deep question. But I will have to say, so where we study in India, it, it can get really intense, like really serious. Like people take it very seriously. And it is. I mean, you're spending all that money. You're going all that way. You're, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, know. you're taking these classes. But it can cause for me, especially it can cause like anxiety when I'm around that energy. And Chris has the ability to make things really funny. Like when, when you're like really stressed out and I'll never forget, we were sitting outside of the shala 
and it was early in the morning. You had your headphones in and you were listening to something and somebody else had their headphones in and they like, didn't they like ask you, what are you listening to or something? And you said the top 40 and he said, oh, I'm listening to chanting music. And you're like, good for you. And you like put your headphones back. I know. He was like, who do you like? I was like, I'm listening to Ariana Grande. <laughs> and he was like, was like chanting. you're like, good for you. I mean, I want to be Four chanting people. in like five minutes over here. I'd rather like, you know, I'll save chanting <laughs> for real life. <laughs> um i'll never forget we came out one day of the shala at, right after prep we're a hot sweaty mess and there's like one mcdonald's in all of mysore and it's actually quite fancy in my mysore india is where we go and we were standing out by the coconut stand and you looked at me and a couple other people were out there that are very kind of like pompous yoga people and um and you looked at me you're like let's go get a mcflurry <laughs> and one of the guys was like Chris and you're like it's fine it's fine and so like that's just that's just one thing that Chris has taught me especially since I haven't seen him in a couple of years because of what's going on um I try to channel that energy a lot like when I'm really stressed out like how can I make this situation more lighthearted? because you know and our teacher in India actually really I think he I think you're one of his favorites because <laughs> <laughs> because he you 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 laugh you know um and uh, what did you tell me once like all the white girls in the shawl are like crying and he's like our teacher's like so uncomfortable because we're all like in our emotions and he's like <laughs> oh so, yeah it's such a fun experience you know to go over there <laughs> you know it's like those little things like sometimes like you know we get so serious i'm just like i just want some ice cream and and relax and take a nap <laughs> yes and we would no. go, um, you know, I, I, when I'm in India, I crave French fries. So we would go and like find, I don't know why I crave fries in India, but French we fries, do. pizza. Yeah. Yeah. We go um, to, what's it called? What's the, the restaurant Maya or old, what's the big one in no, my yeah, Maya, Maya. And then they change it to old house. Yeah. But we just, mm. it's in, it's in Lakshmi Purim, isn't it? But then we last trip, do you remember like we, okay. The thing about India is sometimes they like randomly close their businesses for no randomly. reason. They just randomly. So you'll like get a rickshaw to be like, you're really like craving, like you're going to go to old house and like get some pizza or, you know, actual pizza guys. I don't know what you think. It's like actual like pizza place. And we would go, it's nice. It's a nice restaurant. So we would go there a lot. And, um, I think one time we went there, we were with Todd Todd. And, we there and it was like closed for some random yeah. reason. And like, everybody was, we'll have to tell another story about Todd that with food soon. But, um, we decided to go to the Pizza Hut. The Pizza Hut in, in, in India was actually better. The Pizza Hut <laughs> is so good. He's I remember good in India. Like, yeah, you're like, Pizza Hut in the States is like really gross. I was like, no, this Pizza Hut is so good. It was shocking. I was like, this is better than old, old than Maya pizza. Like, this is awesome. Do you remember you asked the guy that worked there? You're like, do you get this stuff from America? Did I ask him that? Yeah, and he looks at you. He's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, Domino's. Yeah, like, so the Domino's in my store is awful. Do you remember the Domino's that time? Awful. That that Kieran brought us. We wanted some Domino's delivery, and Kieran went and got us. No, we want Pizza Hut, and he brought us Domino's instead. And he got us the American, and it had like corn right. on it. Corn, we like, it had corn on it. Yeah, I was like literally thinking that. <laughs> like we don't eat corn on pizza, dude. Like what is this? So, um, but do you remember? Okay, so I'm not. I'm not good with Indian food. Do you remember that guy that called me basic? Oh my gosh, yeah. I got to. <laughs> yeah, because I made sure I said, like, don't put any don't put any spice in my rice. And he was like, oh, basic. <laughs> you were like, I know, dying. I was like <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you that. One time, so there's these little cafes in uh in um in Mysore where we uh in Gokulam, where we kind of live in the area, and they're kind of run by like they have like western y food ish, you know, toast, pancakes, eggs, whatever that you can go and get breakfast. And there, what was the name of that? the dosha place on the other side of that Todd was like really wanting to go to. What was the name of that? Gosh, I don't even remember now. Yeah. It's hard they, to go there, I don't know. Dosa, they, they sell like just dosas, Lucky which ones. is, yeah. And it's super, it's like a, like a thin, if you're Malari, not. Malari, Malari. That's Malari. Malari, because we can't forget that because that's what Todd said. Yes, oh, that's right. So, so they were going to go, it's on the other side of my source. So we're going to have to get a rickshaw. It was going to, take a, a minute to get there and um they were gonna get doses which are super like you know they have peppers in them it's like this like salt a savory type pancake Not, i'm not gonna eat that like i would be not i'm not it's not good so we're eating regular pancakes you're eating like sweet pancakes. yeah like the regular ones so we went to this little cafe called is it cushy, cushy. Cushy cushy first cow. and i was gonna quickly eat something and then we we're gonna get a rickshaw to the other side well todd was so impatient. hungry 
about getting his his dosa that he was like, let's go to Malari, like <laughs> in the middle of the cafe. It was You're like, like still eating your pancake. You're like just like cutting and eating it. He was like, I really wanted Malari. I like looked man. up. I'm like, guys, guys, I think we need to go. <laughs> he like growled uh, at us. I know. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh. I like looked up. I was like, <laughs> it was like this demon and we all lived together Todd me and you lived together and that, that remember that place we lived in when we it was just you the first month it was just you and me before Todd came that's a nice place it oh yeah the, mouth, the, the rat the rat I was about to say the rat so our kitchen was outside was outside and that's okay that's fine and I was in the living room and you went out to the kitchen and you came screamed. screaming and I screamed out there and like so I ran back in and I was like, what the fuck's happening? And he was like, there's a rat out there. It was dead. a dead rat. It was like a carcass. And like, neither one of us would go out and get it. So we had to call Pradeep to come and get it. One of our, like, one of those, our guys there. <laughs> like, so yeah, Pradeep, he's like this guy that like kind of picks us up at the airport. He's made a really, he's very business minded. Like he has a good business. He books our apartments for us. He does stuff for us. And we had to call Pradeep to come get the rat's carcass for us. And he was like, <laughs> Both of us were like on we're, like, the curled up on the couch together. We like held each other and we're like crying again. And as he's like brought it in, and we're like screaming. Oh, he, like, ah! <laughs> and oh, he was God. so confused about what was happening, like why he had to come get this rat carcass and neither of us were gonna touch it. I know, lucky him. I mean, lucky us. I know. Oh, I miss Pradeep. Pradeep, if you, you know, he was nice. Me, we miss you, buddy. <laughs> That's probably the nicest apartment I stayed at, though, in Mysore. Yeah, same. I no, I stayed in a really nice one. The first trip when you left and then I switched to another place, that was really nice. But that was like the right. second. I mean, the first place that where we met, where we stayed. Yeah, I didn't mind it. But I know like it was like a lot of people didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was like I think it would have been condemned here either in Canada or the United States because I, my bed had bed bugs. Do you remember that? Right, right I yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> there's this one girl that lives with Bryce that year and I like told her I was like you know bed bugs become crabs after and then she looks at me she's like I knew that I'm like okay I just wanted to make sure uh, yeah that's oh. not how that, that does that's not how it happens no that's not how it happens yeah, so, yeah. I would make so I'm kind of like a neat freak so I make the bed up all the time and remember I would like make my bed I would, like make my bed because of you well, I would make my bed up. We'd be hanging out in my room, like chit chatting, and she would come in and like get in the bed with you. Oh, she's back, like and get in the bed. And it's like we were like, and, like at the couch, like at the hangout. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like we're not hanging out with you. Go back in your room. You don't like. I, I came room. over afterwards, or and then she was already already there with you. And I like texted you. I'm like, did you invite her in into your room? And you looked up. You're like, no. Oh. No, she had she had issues. She definitely had some issues. Um, do you remember the Susie's? Oh my gosh, <laughs> I do. I always think about them. I think we still have a picture. Like a picture I do. I still. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put it in this. I had a I pulled a bunch of pictures to put up in our to to edit to put so in. Funny. So the Susie. So guys. So we had. This is gonna sound really politically incorrect, but let me just explain. When you rent an apartment in India, it kind of comes with like housekeepers. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just always mm -hmm. does. It comes with housekeeping. Yeah. And so we had these two ladies that would come in and clean our house. Our for Christmas. It was the whole complex that we had these two ladies and neither one of them spoke any English. And of course we don't speak Canada, although we, we know like one word in Canada that we, one, one bad word we learned in Canada. Um, and so it was like, there was like a rather rotund one. And then there was a really like young, cute, skinny one. And we called them this. We didn't know what their names were because we just absolutely couldn't commute. So we just called them the Susie's because we didn't know who they were. But the really young and skinny one, we would like see her leaving work for the day and she would be like flirting with all the boys on the motorcycles. And so we like had this like story about her. Like she was like Carrie from Sex in the City. We like made this whole like life up for her that we would talk to her about. And she would come in and she wouldn't even clean. Like the road. Right, no, she left it to the other one. Yeah. She would just kind of like, do you remember when he had, they had to carry like the coffee table and she like the other one was like hauling it and she was like, she had her hand just on top of it. I mean, <laughs> she was like, she was our inspiration that trip because she, I mean, and she had no idea. We started to try to communicate with her through our, through, through Google app phone, but I still couldn't. literally couldn't. So we literally made this story up about who this person was because she was so fascinating. 
<laughs> Do you remember when we babysat the dog? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. I like, I still cry when I think of that. Like happy, like fun tears. Yeah. <laughs> and now dog, I like, brought six dogs back from India. Right. You know, like when the dog pooped in the balcony. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about. It was so funny. I like cry laughing when I think of it. We had a dog, we were babysitting a dog. He got hurt and we're babysitting him for a couple, for like a couple days. It was the funniest thing. He pooped on the balcony. And then we had another, uh, another guy live with us. And then he was hanging out his laundry in the balcony and he like stepped on it. A comes in. He's like, oh my gosh, there's dog poo. There's dog poo. And then I was like, oh no, like no one actually even cared, but he was like yelling it. Cause we had like a breakfast, like a little breakfast to get together at our place that day. And then that night, I was like, Yanni, I have to tell you something. And you have to promise me. You oh, my God. I remember this now. Yes. I'm like, you have to promise me that you won't tell Bryce I told you. It wasn't the dog. It was Bryce. <laughs> and then he was like, yeah. And he was like, what do you mean? There's like two washrooms on either side of this apartment. I'm like, I know. I don't even know. I was like, looked up. Next thing I looked up, it was there. And I was like, Bryce. And yeah, she told me not to tell you. So just don't tell her I told you. And he believed you. And he believed <laughs> you. And then like, he, we just all left it there. And then like, you know, the cleaning ladies, they came. And then they got so upset. <laughs> that was, it was a whole thing. And then our like landlord, our, our superintendent came up and he blamed you for it. I know. I know. I got blamed for everything in that apartment though. Like everything. Well, all I hear is like, I'm in the bed. And all I hear is, you think I did that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh it was the funniest thing I, that's all you hear you're like i comes up and i i hear you say you think i pooped on the balcony <laughs> and then i started like laughing and then like the younger cleaning girl she starts laughing too Susie, Susie number two that was her the one that i know story about so she so then she didn't clean it though she made the other girl clean it <laughs> but that's the thing about india like as hard as india can be it's always a fun time there's always right. so many fun stories i mean that's you make like lifelong friends when you're right. when you're stuck I... in that situation together um well and i found out so after your original roommate left you moved in with me and i had to the other, well, I won't say any names, I don't want to dox him. The other guy was living with me too. Well, we didn't know that in South Indian culture that it wasn't like, um, it was frowned upon for women and men to live together. And they don't believe, according to Pradeep, there's no such thing as gay people. And so I was this hussy. Do you remember this? I was like this hussy living with two men. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this, Chris? And like, I was given this like reputation of being like amongst the Indian men as being this Jezebel that was living with two men. It's so funny. Do you remember that? Do, I do. Do you remember when our roommate got his nose pierced? Yeah. Oh, I have that picture too. I'm going to put that picture up. You're, I, and then the next day, the chanting teacher was like, what's wrong with you? It's like, why do you do that? It this is what so girls funny. do. I know. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so funny. I have, I'm going to put that picture up too, because they, um, uh, someone else caught your face. Cause I was holding his hand while he, as I had already gotten my nose pierced. I'm like yeah. filming it. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. oh, are you this? like cause, cause they don't use, they don't use gloves. They don't use any type of sanitation. They just pierce your nose. And uh, yeah. yeah, you got, Oh, Oh, remember when you got your wisdom teeth taken out? Oh my gosh. That was intense. It, it could have, they would have done it the first day I went. You remember I was like, I'm gonna go to the dentist. You're like, I'll come with you. And then I was going to go get an appointment and they're like, you can do it right now if you want to. I was like, no, I'll wait tomorrow. I need a moment. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Let's so, start off the plane. Yeah. So that happens a lot. People will go and get like dental, de dental stuff done in India because it's so much cheaper. And so you needed your wisdom teeth removed and something else too. And so you're like, I'm just going to do in India, but you only let them take like one out, right? Like you didn't. So I, I let them take three out and then they left one there. There's still one there for, for souvenir. Like he, cause it was so, y'all, I kid you not. I wish you I saw it. How did it look like? Cause you I sat saw, there. I was sitting in the room with you. Y'all like I, cause you know, here in America, they like give you anesthetics. They like, you know, I you wanted know. all that. I know, I know you did. I think you expected all that. And he literally the dentist. So you were in your dental chair. Like the, the office looked, it was pretty oh, clean. God. It was like a normal dental office. Like beautiful office. He studied in Louisiana or something. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was, it, but, but literally one of your tooth was, it was painful for you because they didn't give you enough, um, they didn't numb it enough. 
So you were like, I want to like to be put out. And he was like, no, 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 we're not putting you out. I'm I like, know. I, and yeah. I, as your bestie, like sitting there with you, I was like half laughing, half crying because I knew you were in so much pain. But so then much. I cried. He was like one of your one of them wouldn't come out properly. Mm. So I'm sitting there like against the wall watching this happen. The dentist got on top of you, like got out of his chair and like hurdle, like climbed up on your chair and straddled you to try to get that tooth out. And I was like, holy crap, what's happening? Like what's oh, happening yeah. right now? Oh Do you even remember that? Or were you so traumatized to realize he was I, like, on top of you? Yeah, like, you know, I still remember like that feeling. Cause it was like several things in my mouth. It's like, you know, there was no like, oh, wait, one, two, three. There was like no warning. It was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, and he was like, this is no problem. It's no problem. You're like, this is so painful. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, you know, it was funny. And then you're, you're obviously your cheeks are swollen. So then you had to go to practice with like swollen. Oh gosh, cheeks I'm like covering my mouth, just remembering it. Um, <laughs> which, right after that, we went to the slums to give out food or to give out, you know, gifts, toys. And I was like, didn't have my mouth open. I was just like passing on the candy. I was like, oh my gosh. I'm so much pain. Yeah. Cause there's like the blood was still like coming out. Oh my gosh. Do you remember when we went to get Hannah? Um, one of our friends and I went to Oh get my her. gosh. It's so, so it's super cheap in India. So you can like like coming from the Western world, like if you're really rich when you're in India. So like one of Chris's friends from Canada, who he knew before and I became friends too. So we came, we went together and got um some henna done. And Chris's roommate also wanted to get henna done, but she found a cheaper place to get henna done, even though it was already super cheap. And then you finished the story, Chris. She comes home. We weren't, we didn't go with her. She comes home with like, cause Bryce only got one arm. She comes home with both arms. She's like, look, I got both arms done. And it was half the amount of money that you guys paid. And then a couple hours later, she comes out of her bedroom. She was like, look, something's happening to my arms. And it like doubled in size. It was like swollen. <laughs> And then, you know, at, like, I was like a little immature, snarky kid. And I was like, I guess that's what happens when you pay half price. Did you have to go to the hospital? Uh, yeah, to get antibiotics. <laughs> and then she's like, I wonder if my insurance will cover these antibiotics. Seriously, it's super cheap anyway. So I like three know. bucks, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, you took me, you took me when I got that kidney infection. Remember? Do you right, remember right. that kidney infection? And mm. you had to like get me to the hospital and you had to mm. pretend to be my husband because they otherwise, do you remember that? Yeah. It was, it was like one of my last nights there for that second trip for me. Yeah. You had to yeah. pretend to be my husband just to get me checked in. Um, and they wouldn't tell me like what, like I asked the guy I was in, I was in the hospital and they were like giving me like drugs through my IV. And I was like, what are you giving me? He was like, well, from Mumbai. I was like, okay. So the, the good drugs are from Mumbai. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Just make me better. I don't know. So Yeah. Yeah. What a time. What a time. I've never been sick there. <laughs> I get sick there all the time, man. No. The last trip I was there, you weren't there. And I got so no. sick. Oh, do you remember that? I thought I was like, going to die. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I, I, um, it was when Mark and I were rescuing those, those dogs, the mother and her puppies. And we we're going in and out of that gutter. And I got like, all of a sudden I got really sick. And, um, it was a infection from fecal matter. Like I had gotten fecal matter stuck in my system from humans. Like, being in the gutters and it was awful. It was horrible. Um, it was, it was rough. And I had to go, I had to go pick up my authorization while I was in the hospital. And I kept telling the doctor, like, I have to go pick up paperwork. Like I can't leave India because I was about to leave before I, I pick up my paperwork. And right. so he unhooked my IV out of my hand and told me just to go and come back. So I walked through the dusty streets of Mysore with a freaking needle in my, I was like trying to like hold my hand up. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And I got to the Shala to get my, to get my authorization and Usha, it was my right hand. Sorry. Cause I'm right-handed and Usha was like, Oh, and so Usha had to like sign the paperwork for me because I couldn't use my right hand. Cause I had the IV in my hand. It was wild. I'm like, this only happens in India. It's like only happens in India, literally in India. This is it. Amazing. We should go back soon. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to. <laughs> I do too. I actually kind of yeah. miss it, but, um, I do. I miss like, I know you don't miss the food, but I miss the food. <laughs> Do you remember that? Were you with us when we decided that that donut shop had, shop had opened near like the um, Loyal World? No. And so we were going to go get donuts and they were like, it was like, wah, wah, like it was not. Yeah. 
it's like the chocolate man. There's this like stall in my store in Gokulam where this guy makes chocolate. And I think it was one of our friends who said like, is the, it's, it's really good chocolate. But one of our friends was like, is it really that good? Or is it just that it's like the only place in India? Like, okay. You know, the, the best thing you'll get there is like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Um, it's okay. So I'm going to go through some of these, these questions because we, we've answered some questions. Mm -hmm. So Susan wants to know what makes us lifelong friends. Honestly, I think we just got each other. It was so much fun. <laughs> I think like right after the second month, you know, that we met each other, because I used to say like, you know, we met each other. I, uh, it was November and then November, December, I was there. And then we just like really bonded the second month. It yeah. was so much fun. It was like, we just had like the funnest times. It was like the funniest times. And yeah. <laughs> and we just got, we were comfortable with each other right away. Like right away. I know. Just right away. You know, no one got it and we got it. It was, it was all that matters. You know, cause when you're there, you're like in a new, literally a new environment. You need like, you know, you have to find someone that you like, you can support and they can support you. Yeah. And it was so nice. It was so nice. You know, we'd walk around town at nighttime, just eat food, get ice cream. And yeah, it was just fun. Yeah, it's fun to, it was, you know, to get someone to like get that too because some people don't want to eat ice cream past like you know in the middle of the week i was like i want ice cream right now <laughs> do you remember the i tell the story all the time to my students do you remember when we got bumped up to the earliest slot for practice oh my gosh yeah we had to start waking up at like two o'clock in the morning i get reminders from it you know on my phone because it's, it's around this time that we did it and yeah it was like we set our alarm at 150. Yes. And I remember because everywhere in India, like the floors are all like marble. So you hear everything. And I remember laying in the bed and hearing your and my alarm went off at like the same time. And I just heard you from the bed go, this is so fucked up. And then we were walking to the Shala that morning. It was like 2.30 in the morning. And you were like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. Like the whole time. Do you remember when you convinced me? Because I'm not a coffee drinker. And a lot of people in Ashtanga are coffee drinkers, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. And you convinced me one time before a lead class to drink coffee before the lead class. And I think I got to like Marie Asana A and I thought I was going to crap my pants. And I was like looking at you like, what have you done to me? Like, what have you done oh to me? Gosh. Yeah, that was, it was off. Like, I do I don't not know why like, anyone thinks practicing at 4 30 in the morning is, is good. Well, it's earlier in India. Like, we have to, you literally are up at like 2 a.m. and you get there and you're there early and there's only like 20 people sitting outside. There the are gate. people waiting. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Go to bed. I know. Stay it's wild. This last time I went, Belinda and I like planned it so we couldn't be in the early slot. Right, right. Like, for me, like the last time I was there, like, I was, I got the 6 a.m., which is still early, but yeah. Yeah, it's wild. So, that. and it's and people like want the early slot because usually the early the early slot is the, the our teachers not there in the beginning, so it's usually like the more advanced people that have the early right. slot, and they want that because they they think it's like a status thing. It's like God getting up at two o'clock in the morning though is no, awful. It's not fun. I'm like, give me eight a.m. No, it's not fun. Nine. It yeah. is not fun. It is not. I'm here. Like, I do not want to wake up that early. My stomach, when he moved us to that slot, like my stomach, I remember my stomach like flipped and I was like, I, I don't want to do this this early. Like the, I don't want to, you know, and you're in that like mind trap. You're like, well, this is why I'm here. I might as well do it. But like, literally you're going to bed at like six o'clock. Seven. Yeah, seven, seven, yeah. seven, seven is seven. late. Yeah, yeah. Seven is late. And to get up at 2 a.m. And then you get back home from practice and it's still dark outside. Oh, it was still dark. I was like, I finished my practice and people in Canada are still doing their work day right now. Yeah. It's like, it's the craziest. It's, it's not like, I understand the Brahma more to think like I get it. But the, at, at that, by the last trip, I was like, I'm doing Belinda and I were like our friend Belinda, oh, Belinda, Belinda, Belinda over in Vienna. We haven't seen her either since this whole thing happened, but um, we like worked it so that we would not be in, like we wanted the latest slot. Possible. I waited last year until like the last day, just um, get my time. I was like, no, I'm waiting until yet like 7.00 AM. Yeah, I so don't want to be up getting like 630. Yeah, I would I would rather be like in a room full of new students. I mean, Mark, Mark Roberts is a little bit that way, too, isn't he? Like you see him practicing at the 10 o'clock slot and he's like doing the advanced series with the, you know, in the corner while everybody else is newer students. So we're not the only ones that are like, no, give me give me the give me the the later slot. I love, I love the late slot. Yeah. And I'm just tired, like doing that schedule. I've said this before because we still kind of live on that schedule because of AYA. But um, I'm kind of tired of like not having a nightlife. 
Right. Like I'm kind of tired of like having to cut things short early because of having to get up early and, and yeah. like we're just tired. hard stuff. I mean, it's not like we're just like sitting in a room listening to any music. Like we're doing hard stuff. Mm -hmm. It's challenging. It's challenging. It is. It really is. And Chris has got a beautiful practice. He should make oh, some videos. You. He should make some videos for sure. Make some videos. I know. I, know what I else admire you for, you know, creating your channels. Cause I know it's how much work it is and you've done such a great job with it. Oh, well, you knew before, so it was a lockdown that forced that really forced me on YouTube because I lost my shala. Right, you know, my program went down, and so um, and you did it right before, like you were like planning it, and you like started it, and then like yeah, and now it's like I was exploded. talking about it, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, Chris has been with me from the beginning of my YouTube because we have been talking about it about start doing the channel and stuff, and then like the lockdown kind of forced me, forced me into this new this new arena. Um, mm -hmm. I know what else makes us lifelong friends. What else? Our text messages. Right. I know. Well, you know what they, like connects us like a lot to is our dear Vivian. Yes. All Vivian. <laughs> Vivian, same. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I think we just get it. We just have like the similar type of humor and it's, it's amazing. It gives me life. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like I said, that's the one thing about you that like I, you know, and I, you know, whenever I go through something really stressful, which people watching the channel know that I have been listen there's this i don't know if I've, I've told you the details yet because it was so crazy there is this like person doing black magic on youtube and like using my natal chart i know you get that stuff but um it's been stressful but i've been like thinking like what how how would chris handle this situation like how would he laugh about this because he always you always find the humor in everything going on like you always find the, the 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 humor in it and like that's such an admirable quality for a human being to have it's so easy to like go down that rabbit hole of just woe is me nothing's right but you always and, and it, it, it breaks the ice because like i said in the with the whole yoga thing in india in the beginning like that gives me anxiety dealing with some of these people we have to deal with in our and you know you know there are people in the ashtanga world that are not the greatest people to to be around there's a lot of like pompousness and like arrogance and you know with some with some of them i mean there are some good teachers but with some of them but um you really helped me be able to laugh mm -hmm. about some of these people like see the humor and in, in their antics and stuff and that has helped me so much in life but um yeah we've made a pact with each other that whichever one of us goes first the other one has to come get the other one's cell phone and burn it <laughs> <laughs> just like whoosh. so nobody reads our text messages <laughs> so, no you're i'm just like you know i'm dead and just just take whatever <laughs> i'm like no like it's like it's like we uh, we were we said that so many times like if people were to actually read our messages because we tell each other everything and all of our opinions about everything mm -hmm. so i think that's like any friends right you yeah. you're close enough and then you just feel comfortable to share everything deepest darkest yeah right. like, then about the issues and yeah so i think we made that pact a while ago that whichever one goes first we got to collect the phone and burn it because we don't want to see those messages so right. i think was, yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like you're one sick psycho i no. know i know the other one left would be like screwed because all those messages would um would get out so <laughs> let's see someone wants to know and I guess I could flip this on you too, if you want me to. So Patricia asked, Chris, if Bryce could change one thing about herself, what would it be? Hmm. Good question. You know, it's such a good question. Cause for me, you know, being your best friend, I wouldn't change anything. I think you're amazing just the Same way you are. You. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. Yeah. It's such a hard question because like for me like i'd always just encourage you just do what feels right for you and feels good for you yeah i am saying too when i read that question i was like and i flipped it i was like i don't there's the only thing i would change about you is your location i know yeah yeah same i same. would just move you and you used to come down to atlanta all the time because i know i was going to say i was like because when you said i haven't been there, down there for a couple of years i used to come down to atlanta like three four times a year yeah it's easy because you would just drive to buffalo and then fly like an hour and a half drive or an hour, not an hour and a half drive an hour and a half flight yeah, from Buffalo. No, once, like I left Atlanta around like 8 a.m. And I came back just in time to teach a client for noon. Yeah, it's yeah. so easy. It was so easy. And I, and I remember one time we laughed about getting you on a dating app in Atlanta just so you could be a housewife with me. Right. Yeah. It's, 
it's so it was so easy it was so nice i missed it because i would just like drive down park my car in buffalo and then just fly out and yeah it was so much it was so much fun i love atlanta it's such a like a fun artsy city yeah and then where you live it's just like close to everywhere close to everything yeah. You yeah. learned Atlanta. Like I, when you, when you're here visiting it, like you, you know how to like get or get around. Remember that time you missed your, you had a layover in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. I missed my flights. And so you just got on the Marta and you came to my house and like, I didn't even know, like you tried texting me because like in the middle of the night, and I guess I was, and I woke up. Well, like, it was like literally in the middle of the night, like 2 AM. And you were like laying by the door, like a homeless man. Like, I know. I was, it's a funny thing because I knew your door. I knew the the gate to get into your to get into that uh, complex, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Got into code." I'm like, "Thank gosh, I have this." And then I just like literally laid in front of your your doorsteps for until you woke up. And then I, you, I guess you heard me in the kitchen. And you like knocked on the door, and I was Knocking. like, "Holy crap!" And then you you lost your wallet. Right. Someone mugged me. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> Someone mugged me. And you got, you like learned how to like, like you, I mean, literally, do you remember the first time you came down, you stayed in that hotel and we were trying to find you a hotel and I thought it was a nice hotel because it was in a nice area, but it ended up being like the most ghetto hotel ever. And well, it's because I had my, uh, it's because I had Chloe with me. So I needed like a hotel that accommodated dogs. Mm -hmm. That was like one of the few that accommodated dogs, which was, which was fun. Yeah. And yeah. Todd was like, there is literally CSI cars out in the, uh, in the parking lot of this hotel. But you learn, like you got to, you like figured out like how to walk to the shot. Like I yeah. don't, like you figured out the city. So I watched Chloe to your house. It was like a nice walk. It was like February and we're like walking around in shorts because February is freezing here. I know. I tell people that all the time because I'm always like, when it gets into winter, I'm always like chilly here, but you come down and you're like in a tank top um, at, you yeah. know, the fun Publix. I took you to the fun grocery store. Everyone's always getting arrested. Yeah, it was so much fun. <laughs> but no, I like Atlanta a lot. It's just, yeah, really fun. It's easy. There's good food. Uh, I, I still haven't taken you to East Atlanta Village. And I That's keep wanting to because of um, the song that you like, that ooh la la, take me back to Atlanta. East Atlanta. I, I still, know. every I keep like, I need to take him to the village. I need to take him to East Atlanta Village because that's one section you haven't seen of Atlanta yet because it's kind of like over there. Actually, it's like over there. But um, okay. yeah, it's like yeah. over there. It's where I like the hipsters live. So um, next time you come, I'll take you to the East Atlanta Village because this is his own little nook of Atlanta. But um, let's see here. Okay, Lisa wants to know if you think you are a star seed. Do you know what that is? No. So a star seed is someone who has like galactic soul, like you're from a different, like you're from Earth, but your soul is from like a different galaxy. You know, I've always questioned that ever since like as a kid. I was like, I don't feel like I belong here. <laughs> Take me away. <laughs> Take I, feel me like, I feel like Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, take me away. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, oh, it's so funny. Um, so yeah, I think I think you are too. I think you are too. And and the, the, uh, Lisa also wants to know if you have had any paranormal experiences, which I know you got some juju in you. I know you got some like uh -huh. body senses and you know, there have been moments like I would share, like I, I don't know if I've told you before, and you know, I remember um as a when I was uh, a kid, I was I lived in an upstairs apartment and to get upstairs, like it was like outside, outside stairs. So like pulling, um, carrying my bike and you know, bikes are heavy when you're an eight year old kid. And I was like carrying it, just like hauling it up. And I felt for like a split moment, I would like fall backwards, like all the way when I was up to the top of the stairs. And there was a moment where I just felt like I got pushed back to not fall. And then, you know, as a kid, I'm like, oh, I was lucky. But now I just like, always think back to that moment. Cause I remember I was like literally about to fall backwards <laughs> with my bike with me. And yeah, it was just such a weird, it was like, I felt like just a, a gentle tap to like, let's stay, let's stay. Back. Yeah. Oh, that's, so, you have never told me that story. That's wild. And you yeah. remember it clearly. So well, obviously. Yeah, it was too. like, I think I was like eight, like seven, eight years old. But yeah, it was such a moment where I always think back to it. And there was like, yeah, a moment where, I was laying on my rooftop at my old house and I was remember just like laying there. And then all of a sudden like, I was about to like fall and roll over. And right when I was about to hit the edge, I like just rolled back. <laughs> so I the same you know? spirit that's like, nope. Right. Ashley same. Nope. Not yet. Yeah. It's like, not yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's um, like very little situations. Speaking about mm -hmm. near death experiences. Do you remember when we tried to learn how to drive a scooter? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I did better than you. 
You did way better. I was like, yeah, I was the dude in that one. Like you were going to sit in the back of the scooter. I was going to be driving you around. <laughs> and I looked up at Dean like cheekingly. I'm like, if I hit someone or something, do I just keep on driving? <laughs> in India, yeah. Like, he's like, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I, was like, poor hey. I think that scooter is broken though. I think that scooter is broken. Well, he worked with us and he even said at the end of it, he's like, Bryce is better at this. <laughs> I tried. It was, yeah. And now, you know, in India, it's great because like Uber is very accessible. Like, you know, you, it's like here, you just yeah. get an Uber and then it's like for a dollar, you get to go anywhere. Yeah. Then the rickshaws have Uber as well. And those right. are better because they can't up the price yeah. on you. They can't tell you that meter is broken and up the price on you. Right. They have to go by the prices because they're through Uber. So yeah. Yeah. So I get you. Um, so Lisa also wants to know, and I think this is for both of us, but I, We'll ask you first, how did you become the you we see today? Hmm. That's a good question. I always like think about it, you know, every day, you know, I think everything that we go through in our lives, it's like, um, it starts to build up, you know, to who we are in that every single moment, like, you know, this conversation we have, it starts to build up, you know, leather, a little part of me to, to create who I am to this day, which I think is so cool. You know, every opportunity is learning opportunity and, you know, every single person you meet, even if you don't want to meet them, they have something to teach you, you know, you learn from them. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, cool. Well, that's cool. Let's move on. Yeah. But what about you? Like, how did you become? No, I was thinking too, because you actually, even though you're, you're funny and you have a great sense of humor, you've been through some stuff in your life. I mean, I won't get into it, but you've been through some stuff. Yeah. And it's given you a very, um, even in your, the funniness of you and the way that you see life and this, this beautiful, like finding the comedy in it, you have this like intense knowing and mm -hmm. you, 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 you read people really well and you do have a, a way of like, um, maneuvering through obstacles and situations that comes from like such a deep place of wisdom. And so I'm thinking about like everything you've been through in your life. And that's what I think that's what got you to where you are and being the strong person that you are. And it probably okay. taught you how not to like take things so seriously and be able to have like laughter about certain things because, um, you know, and I, yeah, I mean, well, I'm not going to get into it, but you literally like you, you, you do do that. You've, you've learned so much about life just from what life has given you. And mm -hmm. so that has definitely made you who you are. And you're, yeah. you're smart too. Like Chris is smart as fuck guys. Like he, Thank you. he knows the, I mean, you know so much about the human body. Like you understand better than like anybody. Cause you understand the energetic body, but you also understand the physical body. And so you are able to understand the way that the, the mechanics of the body work. And that was one of the things that impressed me so much about you when we first met, because you were able to teach um how to like transition or to dismount out of something by the way the body reacts to the actual action and I, I was so impressed by the way that you you understood that and you actually are able to look at other people's bodies and i know this comes in handy for you as a teacher and for what you want to do um for the rest of your life you're able to look at under other people's bodies and see the physical cause and effect and so you can see why people are maybe struggling with a shoulder issue or why they're having trouble lifting into a handstand because you're able to like look at the body and see kind of the domino effect and, and connect the dots as to like what's actually happening um, in their actual physical body. And again, plus you're a Reiki master. So you, you do know the energetic as well. And so I'm telling you guys, like you've given me massages before. And that's one thing you do in India a lot. That's impressive as well. So not only do you sit there and study the yoga, but you're also, you're constantly signing yourself up for different courses on like Ayurvedic massage, different, different things that you're taking that opportunity while you're there to like learn um, how different cultures teach different types of mo mo modalities. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> it was fun because I got to be one of your guinea pigs one day. You probably know why I'm giggling too. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yes. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do know. Um, but yeah, I almost I, forgot that. I was like, oh right, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> we have a moment. history, guys. Like I know. We have so many things that have happened to us together. But that's why I'm telling you, like, I, I know, I know I'm like, I know I'm like your bestie, so I'm biased, but I'm also know how talented you are. And that's why I keep like trying yeah. to encourage you to start your your channel because I think like what you know is so valuable and um 
and you're so freaking strong. Like you're so, you're so strong when it comes to your body, but you're strong because it's not just, not only because it's natural to, to you, but you, you understand mm -hmm. how to work your own body and how to work around your body, you know? Yeah. And, um, and that's, that's, I, I really think that you should open a different channel because I think that you have so much to offer so much to offer. What easier said than done Liz, you know, right. You like, you put in the work, like the grunt work, it's a lot easier said than done. You know, a lot of people like, you know, could say like rice could say like, Oh, I'm going to open a channel and never just put in the work, but you really put in the work. You put in good content, put out good content. And yeah, it's like rippled. Yeah. It is. It is a lot of work. I, I will say that a lot of people when yeah. before they ever start a YouTube channel, don't really, this is a full-time job. You know, right. I'm, I was showing you before we signed on, I was showing Chris, like how many text messages I still have. Like, it's just constant and it's, I love it, but it's, it is a full-time job, but I'm telling you like different from what I do. If you were to put up like exercise or workout videos like that, that could be replayed so many times. And, um, you know, I can help you edit it and all that kind of stuff. Of course. Oh, I would nice help you. So, um, what about so you? Like how has like, you know, everything led you to become who you are? Probably a lot of the same with you, but I, yeah. I, I react very differently though. I, I have, you changed me. That's why I was saying you made me wow. see the humor in things because I, mm -hmm. when you met me, I was coming out of like a hardcore bad relationship and I had like a lot of PTSD. And so you met me like at the, at the pinnacle of like that, those issues. And so you kind of were a teacher for me. Like mm -hmm. you swooped in and like kind of taught me how to, um, and I remember you were, you were really firm about like not settling. We had, I remember, I don't know if you remember this, we had a conversation on the balcony one night and you were like really firm about not settling for these crappy guys that I'd been settling for, mm -hmm. you know? And you were like, you, you don't, don't settle for this. And you really like, you were like, you don't deserve this. Right. And um, I don't know if you remember that conversation, but it Hell, was, yeah. it was, it was, you know, so, um, probably the same as you, but again, uh, yeah, I mean, everything does. I think Ram Dahl even says that or when his books, you can look back and see how all the dots have connected in your life to bring you to where you are now. Um, oh. I would love to hear Vivian's answer to that. Vivian was like the, uh, my original roommate for that second trip. And she made that trip. She made that trip. Like that second month, all we talked about was just like how amazing Vivian was for us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when, um, I think it was like Diwali. That was the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I know what you're talking about what you're about to say too. And she it was not the, it was not Diwali what was happening for her though. No, it well, we were at home and <laughs> this parade was going down the street. And so I and like, was like everyone was smiling, laughing. I saw it on Facebook. She had loaded it on Facebook and I was like, oh, a Diwali parade. And I looked at the video and I like went next door and I was like, Vivian, that's a funeral. So we like comment under it too. They're like, I think that's a funeral. Yeah. And then she's like, oh. <laughs> she took it down. <laughs> but it's so different than like the funerals we have here in a Canada in America. They're, you know, they celebrate. And she was like, oh, happy Diwali. <laughs> I was, I was oh, man. Oh, man. All right. So Barbara wants to know, who do you go to for advice? You know, you've taught me a lot. Like I, I messaged you, you know, like you said that, you know, uh, not so nice of you, like how I'm like, I've taught you, but you've taught me a lot, you know, to put myself where I'm put into certain situations. I know how to, you know, handle it diplomatically and in a way where I can hold my own and hold my ground. You know, there have been times where I would ask you for advice and I'm like, Bryce, like, what do I do in this situation? Like, this is, this is tricky. And you've helped me a lot, you know? And I thought that, you know, if I never met Bryce, I would not have known to handle myself in this type of situation in this way so yeah that's the thing well and, the interesting yeah. too about you and me chris is we both come from a childhood where we had a nurse like narcissistic mm -hmm. people around us and so we were i think both of us in a lot of ways were accepting behaviors from people mm -hmm. um that weren't really acceptable but because of how we had been raised we accepted it and I remember one particular incident with you and I won't say what it was, but you were flying, you had gone to like Vietnam or something to visit your family and you mm -hmm. got off the airplane and, um, something had happened with someone in your life and it was just so awful. Like, and it was a total, and just like talking about that and being able to compare our stories and, and you realize that I me, mean, as you told me on that balcony, like you don't deserve to be treated this way. 
Like, mm-hmm. don't settle for this. So, yeah, I go for you for advice too. So, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right. Think, yeah. It was such a, I, I really do cherish, you know, our friendship and our relationship. It means a lot to me. Same. Absolutely. Yeah. Same. And I think it's amazing that we haven't been able to see each other in person for like two years now almost. And we're still good. I mean, that's, you know, so, all right. So, you know, it's something Marlene asked. Um, so she asked a question about like the dental world. And it's so funny because we talked about your wisdom teeth, but she actually asked about oil pulling and you do oil pulling, don't I you? I do. I did. Yeah. I did it this morning. <laughs> so explain it. I thought, oh, that's so funny. She asked that. So, um, so I thought you would explain that oil pulling. Right. I've done a video on oil baths, but um, I've never talked bath. about oil pulling. Yeah. For me, I do it, you know, to maintain the health of my gums, the health of my teeth. Um, I use coconut oil. I think that's what most people use. And, you know, some places I have to drive for work when I teach, it's like, you know, 20 minute drive. So, you know, I like sit in my car and, and oil pull. So you, I usually get like a tablespoon of coconut oil and then basically you like squish it around your mouth for however long. And for me, I usually do 20 minutes. And right before I exit this or walk out of my car, I just spit it out, go into the studio, you know, rinse my mouth, brush my teeth, do what I need to do. And yes, and it's really good to, you know, maintain the health of your teeth, the cleanliness of the gums and fresh breath. What else? White teeth. <laughs> yeah. So all the things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I know it's huge. It's so funny. All these old, like, and it's funny because Chris, you, okay. So the first time I met you in India, we had to bucket wash our clothes. Yeah, and you right. were the only one that actually knew how to do that. Um, yeah. Growing up, we didn't have a washing machine. So I like, you know, I was like, oh yeah, this is normal. <laughs> I didn't know how to do around. that. Because yeah. your parents are from Vietnam. And so you were born right. in Canada, but your parents are, so you, you, you watched your mom do that. And so you right. like, I did it. yeah. You knew how to bucket bathe. Like I didn't know how to bucket bathe when I first got to India, but you knew how to do all that stuff. So those are, uh, those are great talents to have. So, oh, um, yeah. or when you just don't have a washing machine. Oh God. I mean, after that, I just started taking my, clothes to the laundry mat because it was cheap and it, and everyone was like you're giving them your panties too i was like hell yeah i don't care <laughs> clean yeah. up I mean, luckily after that you know everywhere we went to there was a washing machine but uh, there yeah was the that's gonna be machine. rough so let's see um so noel wants to know how did you find out what path to take in life hmm you know it was always like I think it was right when I went to my first yoga class. I was like, okay, I, I like this. Maybe I can do this a little bit. <clears throat> Cause you know, in high school, they don't really like prepare you for what you should really do. They're like, pick a career option and you don't even know what anything is. But it, you know, so I started to take yoga classes and I thought it was really fun. And then through that, it just rippled, it rippled onto everything else that I wanted to do. And now, you know, I'm going to school for osteopathy and you know, I feel like it's a continuation of, of everything I've been through so far. Yeah. And I'm serious guys. Like he's an, I, I keep saying that. And I know I'm like, I'm, 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 people might think I'm biased because you're my bestie, but literally you're like one of the best, I would call you a movement specialist. Oh, thank you. Like you, you are so, and you, you, it's like that yoga class, like opened up a, an interest in you in the, in the way the human body works. And yeah. I've never met somebody that is so as fascinated as you are in the way the human body actually moves and works. And it's like, you have such a talent at just seeing again, the different patterns in each individual person. And you're one of the best teachers in your area. So, um, you. yeah. So you guys, I'm telling you like in the comment section below, like encourage Chris to open up his channel. Cause I will share his stuff. We'll get him out there and you guys will have your new years, new body, new you channel to work out to every day because you can you, you've now trained you've trained in so many different t- forms of exercise now pilates hmm. yeah, uh, pilates. bar <laughs> yeah you got me like i said you got me into bar classes because you were like you got to try this you're like you, you have to try these classes these bar classes and of course that's that's something i love to do now it's taken from ballet um but they use different it's and they use like balls to get my 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 pelt. I mean, so I injured my sacrum. Chris was there, um, like what 2016? Yeah, 2016. It June was bad. Yeah, it was bad. And um, and it took me forever to heal, and I was just not able to heal it for I was having such a hard time with it. And um, you were like, you said to me, you need to start taking bar classes because that's gonna get you really strong. And that was the first time I was ever introduced to bar classes, and now I like 
can't live without bar classes because they just help me so much. Um, life. Yeah. I want you, I like, I want, I'm like, he, you could be like a celebrity trainer if you wanted to be. Thank I mean, you're you. already really well known. I'm going to, I'm going to put his social media down in the, the description box below because you'll see how he's pretty big on social media. You get, you do challenges with aloe a lot, right? I do. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's recognized by a lot of big companies out there. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I believe you could be like one of the big, if you, if you opened up a channel and got yourself really out there internationally, I think you could really show oh, your so talent. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, Bryce. Really do it. Cause you can do so much stuff. I mean, you literally, cause I'm authorized in Ashtanga, mm -hmm. but you don't, you don't even want authorization cause you want to be able to like branch out into other movement based modalities. Right. Yeah. I think it's just like always doing what's conducive for, you know, your own well-being, your own life. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's what makes you a good teacher too, because you don't put any expectations on your students as far as like achieving something. It's always about, that's one, another thing I like about you. Like what I was saying, you watch different bodies. It's always about that student in that moment and what they need. You know, mm -hmm. it's never about like pushing yourself beyond what your body is capable in that moment or allowing yourself to slack off beyond what your body is capable in that moment. Although I think uh, the first time I met you in India, you like shortened your practice back because you didn't want to do a certain posture. And so no. she was like, you all know. Like, <laughs> and I was like 22 at the time. I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> when I'm there, it's like, you know, things become like 10 times harder when you're there. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Well, you're jet lagged. Your body is freaking jet lagged. You're it doesn't ever recover from it, ever. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you know? it's, a, it's a lot on your body. It really is. Because you, you, you're just so jet lagged and tired and you're having to do all this practice and it's yeah and, and you get a little i always get deli belly so right. bonnie wanted to know where in india we go um mysore is the main place we go we fly into bangalore mysore is like four hours south of bangalore have you been elsewhere have you traveled elsewhere in india i keep telling people i like always think about it but then when i'm there i'm like i don't want to do anything else no Not i've only traveled there. around around the mysore area like for right. trips but and I, oh. I say the same thing i'm always like i'm gonna one trip after I'm done studying, I'm going to go like travel around to other areas. But by the time it's time to go, I'm exhausted. You're exhausted. Thought, yeah, you're exhausted. I was like this close to going to Goa last time I was there, like my the last few days because I had an extra few days there, and I was like, I was too lazy. Yeah, it's too. It's exhausting. Like you would be very stressful, you know, because no one like they don't speak English. So then when you ask for directions, no one understands or gets it. And, you know, like it depends on if you have data on your phone or not. And it becomes just like this whole mess. Yeah, it's everything is more complicated when you're there. I mean, we've we've said before you and me like this. We don't go there for vacation. It's not no. it's oh. we, we would go to Paris if that were the case, you know, it's <laughs> it's it's exhausting. And yeah, I'm, I agree. Like every time the time is over and I'm about to head home, like I'll go the last couple of trips. I've booked a room at the Taj. Have you ever stayed at the Taj? No, you always tell me to. It's right at the Bangalore. It's right at the Bangalore airport, but it's like a five star hotel, and it's like a right. resort. I mean, they have like massages, spas, all these restaurants, and it's literally five star. But for us, it's like paying for like a Holiday Inn Express. Right. So I always like gift myself a couple of days at the Taj just to unwind before yeah. that long ass flight. Because that flight to India is brutal, isn't it? Traveling there, it's brutal. brutal. Going it's brutal. there and back. Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> I flew back business class last time. You did that once. I did too. I did too. By I, accident. I told you, right? Yeah. You're like, I'm, I, I, I did it on purpose. So I was still sick and I was like, I need to lay down. But I, I didn't understand. So, you know, when you get to the airport, so from my store to the airport, it's four hours. You know, like you were saying, it's exhausting. So then when I was there, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. And then I checked in to the, my flight and they're like, oh, to upgrade. I didn't hear her properly. She's like, oh, if you upgrade your flight, I thought she said like 4,800 rupees, which is roughly around like $90 Canadian. I'm like, yeah, of course that I'll upgrade. Why not? Of course I will. And then I like punched in my credit card, like did everything. And I like sat, um, I like laid against the wall. I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. And I had this realization. I'm like, it is not 4,800 rupees. I looked down there at the receipt. It was 48. Thousand rupees, which is you know, then nine hundred dollars. It was worth it. It was yeah, worth it. No, it was like a thousand dollars extra for me to bump my ticket up too. And I, I got home and I was like, I'm never. I don't care if I have to sell a kidney. Same. I'm, I'm never yeah. flying to India. In I'm, I will always do. That. I know. 
that would made it so like I, I say I've got my points for like next time I go to India, I'm like swiping it for for my business class. Yeah, it, it was nicer to you. Like it was everything you said. I remember like oh my gosh, Bryce talk, talked about this. They were nicer to you because you know when you when you fly, they're not really that nice. <laughs> yeah, everyone who who flies, they know like flight attendants aren't usually like nice. The first time I flew to India, I remember like, I didn't know, like that was my first trip ever. I like, remember my first big trip. And I was like going around looking for the gate. I went to the gate and I was like to the, the flight attendant. I'm like, oh, is this gate G? And she looks, she's like, we are not boarding yet. I'm like, no, I'm just asking, is this gate G? She's like, we are not boarding yet. And I was like, you know, a 21 year old kid. I'm like, is this gate G? You can tell me or not. She's like, it is. I'm like, was that so hard? <laughs> I know. That was like, I got, I kind of had that issue in the Amsterdam airport one time right. and, it was, and it was like, they were doing construction. And so it was, I was so confused because I'd flown from Atlanta to Amsterdam and my seat would not lay back. Right. So I had to sit up completely straight the whole flight. So I was like wrecked by the time I got to Amsterdam I Had this long layover in Amsterdam at the airport. And I like could not figure out, and I'm a, I'm a very experienced traveler, but I think it was like so tired too. Like I just want to cry. Actually, that was a trip we lived in, in the house with the rat, the dead rat, but I had gotten there before you. Cause I always go before because but I know. Days days are earlier. Like, yeah. And, and I finally found a gate and then we were like stuck on the tarmac for a couple of hours. And then I finally I had to fly to New Delhi. And then from New Delhi, I had to fly to Bangalore. And by the time I got to Mysore, I remember just like crashing, like could it was, not, it was yeah. so exhausting. <laughs> It was so stressful. It's so stressful. When I flew business class back home, it was from Bangalore to Dubai, Dubai to Boston, and then Boston had a flight to Atlanta. And I remember flying into Boston because the flight from Boston to Atlanta was going to be just a regular, I wasn't on business class. But I remember landing in Boston and feeling so refreshed. Right. Like, Way I better. Like, oh, I came back and I had like very little jet lag. Yeah, because you could sleep. I remember like getting close to final destination. I was like, I don't really want this to end. This is so nice. And they like made me in business class. The chef like made me um, a special meal because I knew I'd been sick. They don't do mm. that for you in, you know, the peasants no. area. No, no. And I do no. remember my, my, got my guy in business class, his name was Ravi, R-A-V-I. And I go, I go, because you know, it's my dog's name. I was like, oh, that's my dog's name. And he don't think you like that very much. <laughs> I know. I always say that when I, they're like, I'm Chloe. I'm like, oh, that's my dog's name. Dog's name. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it is. It is. It is. All right. So just a few more questions because I actually have another call to get onto after this, which I don't want to end with you because I just love. No, it's so much fun. Again. I got to do this again. I got to do this again. So, um, so Sky asks, what do you see in me that I don't see in myself? And I'll say that back to you too. Right. So I see in you and you, I've, you're such a nurturing and caring individual. And I think you do know that. And you are such a force. You know, you're such a strong human being. And I always adore that about you. Like, you know, you have it in you all the time and you, you're so capable of doing so much, you know, and that's why I'm always drawn to you as like one of my best friends. Like you are nurturing, you care, and you're always willing to do things for others, you know, even if like you have to make some sacrifices. Yeah. Like you've done a lot for, for others. And I feel like <clears throat> you don't need to like tell the world about it. You know, that's the thing that, um, you know, sometimes when people do things, they just want like the ramifications. Oh, wow. You did that, but no, you've done things and it's not like to be celebrated. It's just like, let's just do it for the sake of doing something for others. Yeah. And I think that's like, you're very giving. Mm -hmm. Aww. Yeah, I mean it. Mm -hmm. Well, I was supposed to say the thing about you is I think you're stronger than you think you are. Mm -hmm. I know you know you're strong, but I know what you've been through. And I think you're stronger than you think you are. And I think that you're more talented than you think you are. And that's why I want you to open up the channel because I think mm -hmm. you don't, I think you undervalue the talent that you have. I think you have a raw talent. You know, you've worked hard on your education. Of course you have, you, 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 got, you have to, but you have a raw talent of mm -hmm. understanding things and you're such a good teacher like you're such a good teacher like hands down you teach some of the i've seen your course manuals like you share a lot of stuff with me like you teach such thorough courses and you put so much time and energy and that's why i think that you just have you it is and it is intimidating in the world that we come from because there's so many people that are trying to make it big to, it's hard in like the yoga world and the Pilates and I you know it's hard to stay to stand out but you have that capacity 
to stand out and to be mm. that rock star. And I don't think you understand how talented I tell people all the time. I'm always like, listen, listen, my best friend knows a thing or two about a thing or two. Like he can, he can, I mean, I think you, I think you have so much in you that you just don't even realize like how, how special you are. Yeah. Thank you. That means a lot, Price. No, I'm serious. How many times have I told you to open up a YouTube channel? I know. Yeah. This is like, I just always commend like, you know, how much work you've put in. Because like I said, it's not easy. Like how many people, you you know, you've seen like how many people like dabble into it and then they just get rid of it afterwards. You know, and you've really committed the last two years. But mm-hmm. I think you could do it. I, I honestly, like, I think that you could do it hands down. And, and because you're so focused on anatomy, it wouldn't, you know, for me, the content it's constantly changing and changing rapidly so there's more of a schedule but for you because your content is, is like not going to change that much because it's about the human body like you want to put up you you said you have put classes about anatomy and then also extra i mean i'll help you edit man that's i I've, I've learned listen i'm not the best at computers but i've learned how to edit so i can help you edit i can help you, you do really all well it's, it's so amazing your content's so amazing that's why people love it you know that's why you do have people that love your stuff mm-hmm. oh. oh my gosh besties (laughs) i feel like like that vivian same can always be like used in any context everything everything i love it it has transcended she has become the celebrity of of this lifetime and she doesn't even know it does she i know she's she's life she is like just another like another video where we like have a deep dive of vivian does she we should bring her on a call (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you should ask her when you see her next time. Ask her if she'll come on the call with us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving and Donnie on the call too. Oh my gosh! That, oh my gosh! Oh hi, Yanni. <laughs> <laughs> Every single moment was like a quotable, like amazing moment, like iconic. <laughs> uh, absolutely. That's why I'm thinking like we should absolutely bring her on the channel. I know it would just like last another lifetime. I know, I know. And she has no idea how famous she is, does she? Like, no idea. No. Does no. she sleep in my store like every single morning religiously? I think so, yeah. I know, she's like, you know, she's my inspiration. I tell her, all, I do tell her all the time. Yeah, I mean, that girl, woman, that, I mean, she started off a stronger later in life, didn't she? And she's like, that's hard to do. It's hard to do, it's hard to do anyway. Yeah. But like, and she's strong. She's strong. She's like strong will too. Yeah, she's strong. So talk to her. See if she'll come on the channel. She definitely will. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So Connie wants to know, and I think this is for both of us. How do you stay so joyful? How do I stay so joyful? I think it's just like, you know, there are serious matters to, to work with, you know, serious matters to take in consideration, but not every single thing has to be serious. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I was talking to, you know, a lot of people about it, you know, my boss is about it. And like, if I'm ever in a situation that I don't want to be in, you know, I won't be in. And, you know, it's, it can be as simple as that, right? Where we just have that moment where, for me, at least, I just had this moment where I don't want to be in the situation anymore. I'm not happy. It's not joyful. It doesn't mm-hmm. spark joy. <laughs> I have that book up there. It doesn't, remember, actually, like, um, getting off topic, we're watching that comedian, what's her name, at your house? What's she look like? The Asian girl. What's her name? Oh! Yeah. The one that was pregnant? No, it was another one. The bigger one, Margaret Cho? No, another girl. She was, like, talking about um, that tidy book. Um, oh like the, yeah, no, I think yeah, I think that's the one that was pregnant. What's her name? Oh, she's in a mood. She's so funny. She's like my so age. She's yeah, like kids. Yeah, her husband's like went to Yale, and she calls him like smooth like a dolphin. So funny. She's like, yeah, and then somehow you reach up to my age and you start to read like how to spark joy. And literally, I was at your house and I pulled it out of my luggage. I'm like, oh, I'm, that's- <laughs> I'm like, I'm literally reading this book right now. She's like, pulled it out. I'm like, see, she knows, she knows. But I think yeah, for me, it's like always just about you know doing what feels right for me and if it doesn't feel right just let it go (laughs) yeah yeah our energy is so precious like you know like you study all this and you talk about this all the time on your channel like our energy is so precious our time is so precious to do things we don't want to do right and i think we've been programmed i actually talked about this on a film a video i just filmed that's going to release later on but um we actually talked about that like we've been so programmed in our 
a world to like think we have to suffer through everything and like hustle right. and like that work should be like miserable and you know the jokes everybody's working for the weekend but why does it have to be that way like if you're not happy if your gut right. telling you this isn't right then move on yeah. because move that's on. not that's no way to live life that's absolutely no way to be be Susie number two in life yeah and just and peace out and just enjoy yourself yeah so yeah. Um, yeah. And there really was a moments, you know, that led me up to where I am now, but it's just like a few years ago, I'm like, yeah, like, I have to do this, 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 and just suffer. I was like, no, if I don't like where I'm at, I'm not going to stay there. Yeah. Same and with jobs, does- same with relationships, yeah. same with anything. You, you need- to really like, you know, to say it and feel, you know, to say it and really realize that it's very enriching and empowering. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's, I think that's the wisdom too, that, you know, <sighs> that you have possessed out of your experiences and all that, all that stuff that you bring to life, that spark of joy that you, you bring to life as well. And I know people, uh, I've been talking about this on other channels, like whenever, you know, cause things do get heavy and especially some of the topics I cover on my channel, things get really heavy, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and shit gets real a lot. And if you can take that break to do something too in your life that you like to do, like listening to your music and like, you know, just doing stuff that makes you joyful for just a few minutes, you can carry that energy throughout your day. So if you're not harming other people, like, you know, bother other people, go eat your McFlurry. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm eating it, not you. I know. Right. I still like McFlurries. I still mm-hmm. like my, my, my sweets. I, we both have a sweet tooth though, don't we? Oh Yeah. I do. I do too. I'm not, I'm not that big of an eater, but I like my sweets. I know. God, Malari. Malari! I know. I know. Oh, Malari. I, I already like croaked it. It was like. I know, it was wild. It was so. It was like. We both kind of like looked at each other. Like, like, I just really want a Malari. I looked up. And like, Cause I like, I was like really hungry. So I ate everything. I still ate the pancakes. I was like, I want to go with Malari and get more. And then like you were eating it. Cause they took forever to bring your food out. He was yeah. so upset that I was eating first before we were taking that drive across Mysore to <laughs> go to Malari. <laughs> right. Oh man. Yeah. I, there, a voice came out of him that I, I still have never heard. Like that was like some type of like possession. I, we were, we were, like, like, I know. <laughs> we, like, I just like looked up. I'm like, Bryce, I think we need to go. <laughs> we have to go now. <laughs> just take your yeah. pancake to go. We got to go now. I got to get to Malari. Get fruit salad. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. All right. I love you so much. I you love you come back on the back on my channel and let's get you channel guys. If you want Chris to start his channel, put it in the comments oh. below. Thank he'll you. get you. He'll get you fit. He sent me, Chris just sent me like a halter top sweatshirt because I have a six pack now because of my work in bar. I was like, this is going to look so cute on Bryce. It's going to look so hot on you. Yeah. so you guys we got to get him up on, up on the youtubes the youtube just send him like this is actually for todd i <laughs> know i should say hey todd this is for you <laughs> <laughs> you. Oh, man. oh man well i love you so 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 much i love I'm you so glad that you did this yeah. you get to so everybody watching you get a little peek into my life outside of the camera with my bestie here although i don't feel like i'm much different off camera than I am on camera. Maybe I tell you a little bit more salacious stuff than I say on the camera, but, um, but so anyway, it's like nice to hang out, you know, like, literally I know. Because we, mm-hmm. we don't get, I mean, you, we haven't been, we're like literally have the Berlin wall between us right now. So, um, so yeah. And you're, you're so close to America too. Like you could literally like, yeah, it's like literally fence. an hour away. Yeah. You could just sneak under the fence and they'll give you like half a million dollars in free healthcare. That's all I want. Yeah. Exactly. Then you can come down here and share right. with me. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, um, I think we're recording this on the 23rd. I, I'm not sure this is either going to be loaded up on the 26th or the 27th because we know the holidays are coming up. And I wish you were here for the holidays, Chris. No. But you're One of these, we always talk about it. I know. Next Christmas, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, but, uh, if you guys, um, uh, since this is probably going to be airing after Christmas, I hope all you guys had a very wonderful, wonderful Christmas where we're mm-hmm. gearing up to the new year. I still think it's 2020 half the time. And now we're coming into 2020, Dang. but oh my gosh. I know like, I think time paused in 2020, but, um, but you guys be safe this week and, uh, we'll be getting back to our regularly scheduled programming at, after the holidays. Some Monday mysteries are going to return right after the new year. 
the Wednesday catch up on the dark outpost, the deep dives, all that kind of stuff will return after the holidays. Again, thank you guys for being patient with me these last couple of weeks because some crazy stuff has been going on. So I, I thank you for your patience because it does take a lot to storyboard all of those episodes. So they will be back soon though. All right, guys. Love right. you so much. Love you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.